Hello candidates, uh, welcome to our very last session about machines and in this one we shall be talking about gear wheels which can as well be called cog wheels. So these are special forms of wheels with teeth around their edges and they can also be called toothed wheels because they have uh, teeth around their edges. If they are connected with chains or belts, they move in the same direction. So they can be connected in a series. They can be like two, three, or even more. So when these gear wheels are connected, they can all move in the same direction. Let's see how this happens. Uh, their teeth interlock with those of another gear. So if you have one gear, and a gear wheel, and then you get another gear wheel, the teeth interlock, and when one of them turns, it causes the other to turn. Just like you can see in this illustration, uh, that we have a driving wheel, which is here, it has eight teeth. Then we have the driven wheel, which has uh, 16 teeth. Now, if this one, uh, the driving wheel moves, if it moves to this direction, it will also cause the driven wheel to move. But if these are connected with, with, with chains, then we shall come up with another machine that we are yet to describe. Uh, before we can look at those examples, I want to drive your attention to finding the mechanical advantage of the gear wheels. So if we are to find the mechanical advantage of a gear wheel, this one will be equal to the number of uh, the driven wheel teeth, number of driven wheel teeth, I may not write that, but we can just write the number. The driven wheel is the bigger wheel. So we shall write the number of teeth that it has, which are 16. And then we divide by the number of teeth of the driving heel, wheel, which are 8 teeth. So you'll find that this teeth and this one will cross together. And then by 8, this is 1. By 8, this is 2. We know very well that mechanical advantage does not have units. So it is just two. Since it is a ratio, it has no units. So the same thing applies to when you're finding the number of revolutions or rotations that are made by the wheels. So if they ask you the number of revolutions made by these wheels, you'll just simply get the number of teeth of the driven wheel out of the number of teeth of the driving wheel. And what you get, in case you're finding the number of rotations or revolutions, we'll just put here rotations or revolutions. Now let's take a look at the examples of machines that use gear wheels. We have uh, gear boxes, we have watches, we have watches, we have bicycles, uh, we have bulldozers, uh, those are the big, big vehicles that are used to, to tow uh, stranded ones. We have motorcycles and then we also have electric toys. You realize that all these have some structures of this nature within them. So these are the machines that use uh, gear wheels. These are the advantages of gear wheels. One of them is that they multiply force. Then they change the direction of rotation. They multiply the speed of rotation and they can as well slow the speed of rotation. So these two can be experienced uh, when you're riding a bicycle. There are these small bikes that we call the, the gear bikes. So you find that when you reach a steep slope somewhere, you change the gear and then it changes the speed of rotation. And then you find that when you reach uh, a steep hill, you also change the gear. So that means that gear wheels can multiply the speed of rotation, that is by increasing, and they can also slow the speed of rotation. This applies to bicycles, especially at a, a slope. Uh, then we also have what we call drive belts. These ones are derived from uh, the gear wheels, 
Uh, these ones transmit motion from one wheel to another. So they make wheels move in the same direction. When the gear wheels are connected with belts, what we come up with are called the drive belts. I, I think these ones are normally seen uh, in bicycles, motorcycles, and even other, other things. But then let's look at the examples of machines that use the drive belts. So we have uh, the bicycles. I think uh, if you have one around, or if you look at the bicycle, you can easily see that it has a drive belt. It has the gear wheels, two gear wheels, connected together by a chain. So that chain is what we call the drive belt. Uh, then we have conveyor belts. Conveyor belts uh, can be found in factories like bottling companies as they are uh, packing or even uh, sealing the drinks. You'll always see a belt where the bottles sit and they just move by themselves. So that is one, of the, one, one example of a conveyor belt. Then we have grain mills. We have sewing machines. Uh, these ones have also wheels connected with uh, belts. We have repeated the conveyor belts, but that is just fine. We can just neglect one of them. We have cooling fans of car radiators. And finally, we have uh, motorcycles. So when you look at this diagram, it shows exactly how uh, this machine operates. This is the belt, the drive belt, and these are the wheels, the two wheels. So these wheels can move in the same direction simply because they are connected uh, with the belt. So I think now we can look at each one of these and we try to come up uh, with the uses of the drive belts. So this is a discussion that you're going to have with uh, other colleagues at home there to come up with the uses of a drive belt. We've highlighted some of them here. So what you need to do uh, is discuss them and then list them in our workbook. Thank you very much for being part of this session. Uh, like I told you, it is the last one on this topic of machines. So what we need to do now is to prepare for the topical test. We are going to come up with a test that captures all these areas uh, that we've covered about machines. So in the meantime, what you can do is revise and then uh, you prepare for that test that will be attached to this video clip. Thank you very much.